time for wine. Добрый день всем, кто любит вино, всем, кто хочет полюбить вино. Меня зовут Алексей Дмитриев, я решил посвятить вину всю свою жизнь. Сегодня в гостях у меня Гвидо Вануки, который представляет Антинори. У нас сегодня будет два вина. Это беленькая Петра Бьянко Кастель де Монте Шардоне 2009 года Тармореско из региона Пулия. И Вилла Антинори красная из Тосканы. И мы начнем нашу конверсацию. Right. Our informal tasting, I would say. So, uh, Guido, if you don't mind to introduce yourself, I believe a lot of people in the wine world really know you, mm. but maybe for the guys who see you for the first time. Okay, thank you very much. And I will start to I, uh, I introduce myself as uh, uh, somebody that uh, discovered at a certain point of his life that it was possible to get a salary for drinking wine. <laughs> so, I uh, started to work in this fantastic branch. And I am very lucky to work for a company like Antinori that is probably uh, one of the most interesting companies on the wine scenario in the world. In any case, it's considered uh, a sort of pioneer for the Italian winemaking and for the Italian wine history. Not only the recent history, but also for the um, total history of the Italian wine because uh, Antinori started producing wine in 1385 so it's uh, yeah, it was more, than 600 years. more than 600 years and it's now we are at the 26th generation uh, <laughs> producing wine so we, we have a um, quite now, now, now of course uh, we, we are kidding sometimes but in fact Antinori for those that love wine that are also professionally involved in the wine. Um, Antinori represents a very great opportunity to learn a lot about uh, the wines um, and to face the different uh, varietals, the different um, styles that can be achieved in the production of wines. I agree. So you t you travel quite a lot, right? Did you have yes. you ever counted how many countries you visit per year? I would say about fifteen. Fifteen, yeah. Yes, 10, And you're 15, responsible for. I'm responsible for our our structure is very simple. We are three, four, five guys yes. uh, around the world. Yes. We are exporting in 136 countries now this year. And uh, we simply share these countries yeah. uh, according to mostly Europe, knowledge. Europe, no? no, not really, not really, because we are um, Antinori is historically very strong in in America, so yeah. South America, Canada, and uh, I mean, US. Just just for you, I mean, uh, you travel everywhere, yes? I because I thought usually, you know, one one person is possible for Europe. No, no, in, in Antinori it's different. Uh, <laughs> I'm just you give you an idea, just to give you an idea. Of taking Europe, care of yeah. Central Europe. Uh, but also Spain, Ukraine, okay. Belarus, Central Asia, so okay. Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Azerbaijan, and uh, Armenia, India, um, Mexico, Unbelievable. Uh, Emirates. So it's it's really. You already Dubai. have your favorite place where you really want to come back. Mm. Maybe because of, most of, of the kitchen, maybe because of the culture, maybe because of the uh, sommelier. I don't know. Uh, frankly speaking, I, I don't have a favorite country. I. I like to go in Germany as well as in India as well as in Kiev. I, I feel comfortable uh, yes, almost sir. everywhere. Yes, almost, second almost. time here or third? No, I've been here. I don't know how many times. Oh. Several times. Several, Several times. times yes. I don't know how many. Frankly speaking, I don't. Okay. I don't take accountability of the. We just enjoy coming here, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Of course, because the concept is. Um, I mean. It's a question of uh, approach of the wine. Yeah. The wine is uh, not only a product that you have to sell or a product that you have to present or to market. Uh, the wine is something that you enjoy. This is the concept. I mean, uh, the it human being can live without wine, cannot live not without the first water. Necessity, yeah. So it's really something that you enjoy. And uh, the good thing in this job is that you have to do you work with people that have the same concept of the wine. Mm. Our partners all over the world are people that love wine. And so it's, it's pleasant. 
it's, uh, it's really something that uh, I like to do. I agree with you. For me also, it's a pro like I told you when I first met, it's a project for the whole life. And uh, I'm sure that uh, it's a great stuff. Like you, you said that you get paid for drinking wine, yes? I was great. almost, yeah. <laughs> for me it was a little bit more difficult because I, I had to serve it in, uh, in a restaurant, yeah? But it was also fun because for me I love communication with different people because in a restaurant you every day something new, yeah? You, of course, even the bottle of wine, if I get the case of the same wine, it's always even the same vintage, yeah? You know, there's gonna be all different and so many have to taste all the bottles before they serve. Well, of course, some people get angry, you know? Why you taste my wine, you know? But uh, if you want to serve it nicely, I mean, it, it here's slowly, slowly people, yes, and It is part that. of the game. Yeah, it's yeah. part of the game, and uh, I'm lucky, yes, honestly. And my wife, you know, when I go travel to different countries, she said, oh, again, you're going? Of course, you know, it depends. <laughs> if you dedicate yourself to the wine, this is also a fun part. You go and you see different cultures, you know, different uh, kitchens I adore. You know, for me, uh, the kitchen is a second passion. I love to cook as well. And uh, really, when you cook, you understand what kind of food can be combined with uh, specific wine. So, okay, let's start uh, with our first before it's getting warm. It's Pietra Bianca, which is translated as a white stone. Yeah? Pietra Bianca is a white, yes, if you translate it properly, it's a white stone. And I wanted to ask you. Uh, Chardonnay in Italy, it's, it's uh, produced from Piemonte to Sicily, right? I mean, um, uh, I as you have seen, for example, Gaia Rain in Piemonte, yeah? And then uh, Chardonnay Planeta, and then uh, you have uh, Cervara della Sala in Umbria, right? Well, all over Italy. Yeah. Um, but why, Chardonnay, why, why? I would say, uh, sorry, Chardonnay, like Cabernet Sauvignon, and recently, in the last years, also Sangiovese, uh, these varietals are actually really international varieties in the sense that it's there is no the, country where you don't find yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, exactly this is the, the point what happened in the last years with the technology and also with the climate change I agree yeah. there are, uh, the, it is possible nowadays to plant and to work and to um, develop with this grapes wine I don't say all over the world of course not in Alaska but um, you never know. In what <laughs> but if you see what is planted in Germany today, uh, it was unthinkable 15 years ago. I agree, yes. So um, the fact that we in Italy are working with Chardonnay, with uh, Chardonnay, with Cabernet Sauvignon, with Syrah, with Malbec, with it's all possible okay. grapes, agree, is, yes. is totally. Uh, of course, the result, and this is the interesting part of uh, these grapes. The result is very different in the glass, according to the terroir, yeah. according to the climate, and so why, according. Why Puglia? Why did you choose Puglia? Not Basilicata, well, not Campania, not maybe. Puglia, because it was an opportunity. Okay. We had the opportunity to achieve in two different regions. So we are talking about the north, Bari, and the south, which is close to Brindisi. Uh, two very interesting uh, vineyards. Uh, we are talking of uh, about 400 hectares, so quite huge. And uh, with two, with these two areas, which are quite different, one is close, is more in the inland part of it's in, in the land on the border with uh, with uh, other regions, uh, and the other in the south is close to the sea. We had the possibility to have two very different microclimates and two very different terroirs, where we can work on the autochthone grapes, Alianico, uh, sorry, Negro Amaro mm -hmm. and Primitivo mm -hmm. mainly, yeah. but also Bombino, Nero di Troia, different grapes, uh, autochthone grapes from Puglia, and Chardonnay, but also Cabernet oh, Sauvignon. Nice. And we so the first idea was to work with uh, local grapes, yeah? Exactly. And then you so understood that, of course, it's a beautiful place for Chardonnay as well. Why not, yeah? From the beginning we started with Chardonnay okay. anyway, because we wanted to uh, achieve, uh, of course, on the international market, a wine that could be understood all over the world. And Chardonnay is the grape, definitely, uh, that okay. is... Um, Quite known everywhere, yes. It's, uh, it's like English language, you know? If you want to go abroad, you have to know English. If you start with the wine, you start with Chardonnay, maybe, yeah? If we're talking about 
if we talk about wine concepts. Yeah, and like you said, uh, Guido said also at the beginning of the conversation that mostly in the world there are three types of white wines, yeah? Some which are more crispy, I mean, three uh, styles, styles the let's big, say, uh, big styles, yeah. Uh, we've been tasting a lot of them, the guys know already, yes, some crispy Sauvignon Blanc, yeah, some uh, bold or maybe heavy, or maybe oak Chardonnay, not so heavy, but uh, oak Chardonnay for sure, uh, and uh, aromatic wines, yeah, which comes maybe from Alsace, or maybe from uh, Austria, maybe from Germany. So this is a, a second type. We have here 80% uh, of Chardonnay and 20% of uh, of no 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 it's a chardonnay chardonnay hundred percent yes but I read maybe we have some uh, no, fiano the, the, or uh, the fiano but not in this in the, in the other in the other yeah and this is hundred percent yeah yes ah, okay hundred percent and uh, it was oak aged for sure yes uh, very but uh, if you, if you notice it's very decent yeah uh, the oak is something that has to um, to bring the wine to it's a makeup for wine, you know. It's honestly, makeup. but but the problem in oak very very often and in the Chardonnay as too well much, yeah? uh, is that sometimes the oak is uh, to coming out too strongly and um, and this is a, a question also of style uh, in the winemaking. There has been for different years the trend of very aggressive mm -hmm. oak notes, vanilla. Mm. That are really bread, you know, uh, hitting yeah. in your nose. Um, now we we are in a trend where elegance is much more requested. So you have the oak as an instrument, not as a result. I agree. Now this is the point. Uh, because the some oak of the producers agree. Yeah. Get, they, you know, they, they thought that. Okay. Well, how to produce a, a nice chardonnay? You need a warm climate, and you need new uh, oak barrels. Yeah. And then you put, that's what was the idea, you know. And sometimes, really, they didn't understand where it's enough and you can, you can bottle the wines. Let's discuss what we have uh, on the color, on the nose, on the palate, if you don't mind. Do you spit your wines or are you... Uh, no? no, I don't. No, why? Why? It's a good wine. I have to drive. <laughs> I don't have to drive tonight. So. Oh, but actually, if you go for the wine tasting, so like you have no, no, nobody would speak sixty. The wine. Yeah, no, of course. No. No, okay, the I'm, color. I'm it's kidding. I'm okay. kidding. <laughs> uh, I know that you have the tasting tomorrow, so you don't have to speak. But you know, I have to drive home. Uh, on the color, yeah. If you see, it's pretty golden yellow, yeah. Which uh, is very typical. Which is of course uh, very sure. typical. But it's nice. Uh, star bright. Uh, you see, it's clean, nice. Oh, I like, love the color, actually. You know, it's a nice golden color. You must consider one point. Puglia is uh, the southest uh, region uh, in Italy, so we are talking of a very, of a very hot area. Yeah. Um, the result of the Chardonnay in Puglia is totally different from Friuli, mm -hmm. for instance, where the Chardonnay has is much fatter. Yeah. Now we have. Um, uh, the maturation of the grapes is, comes sooner than in, in the northern mm -hmm. countries. Therefore, the, the wine is fresher somehow. Okay. Right? So, so the harvest is sooner and, and we have a, a different style in comparison to the Chardonnay that you know, let's say a classic Chardonnay, which is a little fat, perhaps mm -hmm. a little bit, um, with brighter shoulders. We have here, um, as you said, the color is very typical. Um, it's gold, and in the nose also you have typical notes of, of the Chardonnay. You don't even have to smell. You know already. <laughs> yes, I know it. I, I know times, this right? one. Okay, for me. Line. Okay, then uh, I would tell you what I feel. The first thing what you feel here is actually we've been just smelling. Yes, uh, the cornflakes, maybe with a little touch of honey, and uh, of course this is ripe uh, pineapple uh, for sure. Uh, some some touch of vanilla, yes, uh, but not intensive. For me, this really cornflakes with a little bit of honey and uh, some citrus. But uh, what is refreshing, which is good on the nose, because there's it would be only sweet aromas. It would be boring, yeah. And there is some freshness, some citrus going on. Maybe uh, this is a sweet uh, orange, or you know, sometimes it's caramelized orange, something like that. Some, some Okay, let's taste it.
beautiful acidity. The wine is totally dry. The acidity dry. Is, a, is a part of this wine. Yes, mainly. totally dry. And but uh, the creaminess comes uh, at the end. The aftertaste is the finish is very long, yeah? more it's than different. 15 uh, seconds. And uh, this is what I like, you know, on the nose because it was uh, the one thing which was would be really missing is this acidity and freshness of uh, oranges and on the taste maybe you feel it, yeah? It's nice. I really love the Chardonnays which are not too heavy and uh, this is maybe me medium heavy, yeah? It's medium heavy, correct. It's like, uh, it's like you take uh, the barrels which are uh, light toasted, heavy toasted, this medium toasted. The, you know? problem, the problem with this type of grape is to find the right balance in terms of aroma, of, um, um, of acidity and uh, you must give a structure, so you must give body to this wine, yeah. therefore oak, but the result must be elegant of and course. balanced. And uh, what I think is great in this wine is the balance of all the elements. As you said, there's uh, exotic fruit, vanilla, which is uh, very, very decent. It's not yeah. coming out yeah. strongly. The different aromas, uh, cornflakes that you were mentioning, are joined together. They're not fighting um, against uh, each other. And, um, and certain percent alcohol, huh? For a hot uh, place, it's quite nice, huh? This yeah, is also that this is another, another legend because... Yeah. Uh, not a legend, uh, but uh, <laughs> when you have a lot of it, sugar... It's, it's several, several uh, years that uh, the wine producers in southern Italy are not only those ones that have 15% heavy, percent yeah. alcohol. Um, there has been a lot of improvement in, in, in these areas in Italy. Um, now we can say that Puglia and Sicily as well yeah. are really producing and giving to, to the people very nice and elegant wines, more and more. Uh, if we make the comparison with the wines that were produced in Sicily 15 or 20 years ago, Different story. It's, a, it's another world. It's definitely another world and the same happens uh, with Puglia.